This is a torque wrench. This is a torque wrench. This is also a torque wrench. And so is this. Now all of these torque wrenches are meant to tighten fasteners to a prescribed torque or level of tightness. But these two cost about 10 times more than this one. This little guy here is actually called a torque key and it's got a fixed torque value of five Newton meters, which is actually very convenient because there are a lot of fasteners on a bike that call for five Newton meters of torque. Now these torque keys are widely available and they can be had for 15 or $20. But I've always been a little bit curious as to the accuracy of these torque keys, given that it's basically just a chunk of plastic with a little aluminum sleeve coming out of it. So in this video, we're gonna be testing the accuracy of the humble torque key and see if we can really trust it on our beloved bikes. Okay, so this is a digital torque meter. The way it works is that you insert a wrench into the slot, you turn the wrench and it'll tell you how much torque is being applied at that point right there. So I've got two of these torque keys, one's from Richie and then another one was a freebie that I got from Competitive Cyclist. I honestly believe they're the same tool. They're just branded differently. But nonetheless, we're gonna test both and just see what the accuracy is like out of these little torque keys. All right, so I will go ahead and test the Competitive Cyclist one first. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the torque measurement here and then just insert the key and turn until it clicks. And would you look at that, 5.05 Newton meters. That is pretty good. Let's do this a couple of times just to get like an average here. So the first one is 5.05, 5.01, 5.08. That's pretty freaking accurate. I would say that's probably more accurate than the Park Tool one that I've got here. All right, so I'm gonna set the Park Tool to five Newton meters. Okay, so there you go, five Newton meters between the four and the six, and the knob is at the one. 5.41, well that's almost 10% off. Let's try that again. 5.5, one more for good measure, literally. 5.58, so it looks like the park is reading like 10% high. Interesting, okay, well, I will try the other torque key that I have here, which is a brand new one that I got from Richie recently. Our little adapter in here. Okay, the Richie torque wrench. 5.3 Newton meters. Do it a couple more times. 5.24. 5.21, nice. So these actually do appear to be fairly accurate. So that's actually pretty interesting. I was actually surprised at the repeatability and the overall accuracy of these cheap little torque keys. So the competitive cyclist one was reading closer to five, but you also have to remember that this tool is about five years old and I've been using it pretty regularly over the course of those last five years. Whereas the Richie one is actually brand new. And so as we saw, the Richie one was reading slightly high, something on the order of 5.2 or 5.3, which is still only reading about five or 6% higher than five Newton meters. And honestly, I think it might have something to do with the fact that the click action of the brand new one is much stiffer than the older competitive cyclist one. Nonetheless, both of the torque keys are actually reading more accurate than the Park TW 5.2, which has kind of been my go-to tool for the past several years. Now, according to our meter here, this particular TW 5.2 does seem to be reading about 10 or 12% higher than prescribed. Now, obviously it's a lot more challenging to create a tool with a variable torque range that'll give you accurate torque readings across the entire range. But I am happy to report that these torque keys do seem to be really accurate at five Newton meters. Now, for whatever reason, it's kind of become my unofficial platform on this channel to explain to the world that on some types of torque wrenches, the grip position actually does matter and will influence how much torque you actually apply when the wrench clicks. Now it's this offset pivot point here that you can find on all wrenches of this design that makes this what's called a length dependent torque wrench. For instance, I'm gonna go ahead and set up this torque wrench at five Newton meters. And when I hold the handle right in the middle, you can see that when it clicks, I basically applied close to five Newton meters. Remember this one was reading slightly high. Now I haven't changed the torque setting at all, but if I were to say choke up on the torque wrench, okay, so it clicked and the torque setting was at five Newton meters, but I actually applied 8.61 Newton meters, which may not sound like a lot, but that's more than 50% more than I was hoping to apply. If I were to add say an extension onto the back of the handle, which also is something you should never do by the way. The point is when it does click, 
I've only applied 4.1 newtons, which is you know 20% less than I actually wanted to apply. So again, definitive proof that for some types of torque wrenches, the grip position actually does matter. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, it's because I want to test the length dependency of these torque keys, because I believe that even though these are click type torque wrenches, these are still length independent, which means it doesn't matter where you hold the handle when you apply the torque. Now, one way to change the sort of effective grip position of this torque key is to basically extend the length of these wings on the uh, handle portion of the tool. If I change the grip position now by holding the tool further out of the pivot point and turn until it clicks, I'm still reading 5.08 Newton meters. So let me try that one more time. 5.08 again. All right. So that, I think, is a demonstration that this is not a length-dependent tool, which means it doesn't matter where on the handle you hold the tool, which for a torque key like this, honestly, doesn't make that big of a difference because there's only so much area that you can adjust your grip position on this tool anyways. But it is interesting, uh, at least to me, to know that this is a length-independent tool, whereas something like this is highly length dependent. When you look at the torque key, on the other hand, it's highly symmetrical about this axis. I highly suspect that whatever clutch mechanism is inside this tool, it's concentric about the axis of rotation, which makes this length independent. However, the only way to know for sure, of course, is to take it apart and see what's inside. So as much as I hate damaging a perfectly good tool, I feel like this is worthwhile knowledge for the greater good. So this is the whole tool here, look at that. There's a common spring that runs all the way through. This is the main part of the housing. This is the handle essentially. There are two metal detents at either side. Then there's the main part of the tool which slides in and there are these ball bearings at either end that compress symmetrically about the middle. So what happens is if you're tightening a bolt down or something like that, if you apply enough of a torque, the balls will compress the spring and slide inwards allowing the tool to turn. Trying to get a better view here. So the way to think about this is that this Park TW 5.2, the axis of rotation is here, right, the tool head, but the rotation of the clutch mechanism is right here at this offset pivot point. Now these two points are split by a distance of, I don't know, 30 millimeters or so. On the torque key, those two points are coincident because the rotation axis for the tool is this cylindrical piece right here, but that's also the axis of rotation for the clutch mechanism itself, which again makes this a length independent type wrench, which means it doesn't matter where you hold the handle. Okay, so there you have it. The humble torque key actually turns out to be pretty repeatable and pretty accurate. Now again, this is a fixed torque tool, which means it can only click when it reaches five Newton meters, but that's actually a good thing because again, there are many applications on the modern bicycle that require five Newton meters of torque. Now for me, destroying this older competitive cyclist torque key did feel kind of blasphemous, but I think it did shed some light on how these tools work because now we know that torque keys in general are length independent, which means in addition to being repeatable and accurate, it doesn't even really matter where you hold the handle when you apply the torque, you're always gonna get five Newton meters applied at your fastener. All right, so that's gonna do it for probably my fifth video on bike torque wrenches. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.